This has this is the are we actually recording? <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> is it your turn, Mike, or is it my turn? Uh, well, 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 if you listen to the podcast last time, yeah, um, I, we've gone to that point where we are not actually talking about who's doing the introduction first. I forgot. Yeah, it's it's sort of amalgamated into into Forever. the ether, in, yeah. into the into the ether. Yeah. So this is the As Yet Undecided podcast with your conflicted hosts. Mike and Sophie on location. My place, my home. Yes. Please don't stalk me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hey, hey, Mike. Is my is my voice actually quieter than yours? Um, is it just a little bit? It is a little bit. So. so, so just, 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 I'll just put myself just, closer. Just bring, just bring the microphone a little close to you. Yeah. So, I, is it working? Yeah. I no, I'm still quieter. What's wrong? Uh, it's, it's, What's wrong? What's wrong? So, how come I'm quieter? Um, did you switch the microphone to USB? Yes, I did. It's on microphone USB PNP. Okay, so that's fine. Okay, actually, everyone's now quieter. What's wrong? No, nothing's wrong. Okay, at least we're balanced out now. Yeah. Sorry for the audio difficulties. We should have actually tested this beforehand. No, uh, that's okay. That's okay. You, you, you can be forgiven for that. Yes, I suppose so. <laughs> so, 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 how, so how was just your whole one week of break so far? Oh, it's been pretty relaxing, actually. I did a little bit of study still, so, you know, just to keep my mind sharp, but Dad actually commissioned me to actually read the gun. And commissioned? He, commissioned. I've been, I'll be paid $160 at the end of the job. Okay. Commissioned. Yeah. As for you, Mike, how's the oh. week, so... Yeah, well, I'm just glad it's over. Yeah, because that means your exam is over. Yeah. Anyway, Mike, it's now the 23rd of June, which is probably the, the, like, the closest thing we'll have to mid-Christmas before very we true. go. Very true. Yes. So, Mike, I got your family some... What, can you, why don't you describe your gift? I got your family. No, no, no we, we, have to, uh, we have to begin this with a premise because Sophie asked me about posing an idea for the mid Christmas present. Yeah. And 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 Sophie gave me a few hints. Yeah. As as Sophie usually does. Blatantly obvious what it was. Yes. And it was a bath bomb. Yes. So she she had the ingredients ready and she wanted to make one. But what's so special about this particular bath bomb I was about to make. Yeah. And, and, or I did make. And I said I said hold up, hold up, hold up. Wait a minute. Um, I came up with the ingenious idea. No, it was me that came up with the ingenious idea of a pine tar bath bomb solution, thank you very much. Oh, yeah, yeah, but I was the one who... You paid for the bath bomb solution. Yeah. No, you, no, you paid for the pine tar solution before inside the bath bomb, but it was actually my idea to actually do a bath bomb pine tar. No, pine tar bath bomb. Because the thing is, with pine tar, what you usually do is... Um, how would you explain pine tar, Mike? You actually know more than me, because you used it. So... So pine tar is usually used as a coating to reduce, or to create a barrier, um, so people with eczema scratch less. And what do you do with pine tar? Like, do you put it in the bath? I you, think you, you, you stick it in the bath. Yes. Um, and you soak in it. Yes, hence my idea of a pine tar bath bomb. Yeah. Though we have no, I have no idea whether it's going to be effective or not because the dry, because remember bath bombs are dried out, and I'm not too sure what will happen if you dry out pine tar solution. Yeah, because yeah, well, that's the part that I am eagerly awaiting when I go home tonight. Yes, I made six bath bombs. They might all be completely useless in the end. Oh, well, well, we'll see how it goes. Um, yeah, um, I'm, I'm kind of actually excited to see if it's going to work or not. If it works, what would you do then? Um, I will probably give, uh, I'll probably steal a litre. <laughs> You're going to make me into a bath bomb factory? Yeah, aficionado, yes. Well, why don't I teach you how to make the bath bomb so you can make some for yourself and I'll make some. And I can't make a litre of. 100 mils yield six bath bombs. Yeah. And that's already, like, a lot. Yes. So, if you're going to give me a litre, or if you're going to steal a litre of pine tar soul, you probably have to make half the bath bombs yourself. Yeah. 30 bath bombs. And, and I'm sure that um, 
you will be commissioned. Yeah, you'll actually pay me yeah. to make, make some bath bombs. Yeah. I see. Oh, that'd be nice of you. Oh, dear me. Because, like you said, yeah. like we said before the podcast start, like, 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 we're talking about $4 a bath bomb. No, no, two dollars bath bomb. Yeah, yeah, but plus the pine tar ingredients. Oh yeah, top. true. Pine tar. I've got to, I've got to add in the pine tar. Yeah. So you've, yeah. So you've got about four dollars there. Yeah, four dollars of bath bomb per bath bomb. And how much is a bath bomb in, in Lush? Um, because they usually have a uh, at least a two hundred percent markup. Yeah. So uh, twelve dollars. Twelve dollars for bath bomb. I can't remember that. So I, I don't remember bath bombs being that expensive. Well, that's the po- that's the point, but especially when, like the the price of the pine tar would decrease by um, supply and demand curves. True price. Oh yeah, and you guys get pine tar solution much cheaper than I would because yeah, because it is like we get it as a um, description. Yeah, description dispensary, and and. and and it is funded by the, um, the government. Yeah. Because we're not like the U.S. Oh my goodness! What the ten dollars for a bath bomb? See. No. Think we are doing some research on bath bombs. Yeah. How could they? It's around right about ten dollars for a bath bomb. You can get some for about seven dollars, but oh my goodness, you can get a bath bomb for sixteen dollars. See. So, 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 you know, $10 a bath bomb can be reasonably profitable. Yeah. Are you going to sell them to your family? Um, yeah, and um, we'll see if my sister can drum up some relative interest. Yeah. But because it's uh, it's very niche. <laughs> yeah, it's pine tar bath bombs. Pine tar bath bombs. Um, and they were on sale on Amazon once upon a time. Oh, really? Yes, I found some on Amazon. Oh. Because I because I was thinking about buying you some instead of making you some, except I found out how no one actually sells them. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, I'll just t- I'll just take it up to my own hands. Yeah, exactly, and like we were talking about last week about the emulators. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's like you like you see a gap in the market and fills up. Yeah, exactly. So mm-hmm. we're, cra- we're crafty types, aren't we? You're more of a crafty type than me. I- I'm just the one with with the ideas. <laughs> Well, I came up with the idea. <laughs> yeah, but like, like I suggested doing the pine tar. No, I said su- no. I did. This, I suggested doing the pine tar. <laughs> anyway, what? Anyway, what do you think of the packaging? Well, 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 well Sophie has done some very simplistic um, packaging here. Very black and white. Yes. Um. Very, very nice. Mm, thank you. What? Oh, I, I, I especially like your uh, commission statement down the bottom. Okay, what, what does it say? It says down the bottom. Commissioned by Michael Canara and the Canara family. For the Canara family. For the Canara family. Yes. Which is going to be hilarious because um, I'll be flying back to New Plymouth tomorrow afternoon. To see your family. Yeah, um, even though I know that um, at least one of my family members will complain. Yeah. Because they'll have to drive the 100Ks to pick me up. So that's only an hour driving. And a bit. Hour yeah, and a bit. Yeah, and a bit. Yeah. Um, actually, let's see how many of your family members think you actually bought that. No. Why not? No. No, but it's like... <laughs> It's like, like, um, like, like when I was telling my family that I was going to church, right? Yeah. Dad said, who's the girl? <laughs> so they're going to ask the girl who actually you bought this for. No, no, no. They would say, who did you con to make it for you? <laughs> Those exact words. I'm surprised your sister doesn't re- is not really interested in me, because honestly, I've actually impacted your life quite a bit. I gave you a hamster blanket, which you showed to your nibblings. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Um, oh, it's 
Well, the, the thing with my family is they generally don't care until they are physically involved. All right. Does that make sense? Yes. Empathy. And, yeah, uh, 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 until you are in their physical presence, then they'll take notice. I see. Yeah. So they won't care that I made those bath bombs? No, but the, the, well, they don't know that it's you. They'll just see my friend made it. All right. And associate accordingly. And I'll say that the same person that did this also gave me the hamster blanket. Your sister's going to have a very strange um, thoughts about me afterwards. <sighs> I don't think so. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, because like, like, they're like they're, they're, there's some things that my sister has done that um, I, I haven't necessarily said strange, but um, it has garnered a second look. I see. <laughs> if that makes sense. Mm. Unusual. Yeah, we'll go with that. Yeah. We'll, we'll go with that. Um, All right. Um, I suppose because we're we'll such geeks, we do have to talk about video games once in a while. <laughs> once every podcast. Oh, once every podcast. It's a Steam sale right at this moment. Yes, it is. Uh, so, as I'm recording on a Friday, it's currently a Steam sale. So, in, are you going to buy any games? Well, most likely, yes. What games? I don't know yet. Go to your wish list. What's with you and the wish list? Oh, it's just one of the surefire ways of knowing what you what your friends want. Yeah. 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 Um, and I actually, I think of the wish list as a, like a short list because what well, prevents me from impulse buying? Basically, I see. Basically, okay. Yeah. So if it's if something's on the wish list, it means um, I have thought about it and I actually want it instead of just you know oh I just bought it just for the sake of buying things. Yeah. The wish list basically keeps a cap on that. It's just actually, so I think this is what you want or this is what you need, and it's like having a shopping list. Well. I, I am reminded of a Rolling Stone song. What's that? Cat can't always get what you want, but mm. if you try sometimes, you get what you need. Yeah. Yeah. Bow. Bow. Bush. Bow. 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 Figure it out. <laughs> anyway, shall we get on with the podcast? Of course. Um, okay, first things first. I'm not too sure if this is going to break copyright, but I do need to play this. To actually give you some context. Okay. And what uh, is this exactly? Kiki, can you premise this for me, please? Okay, where's the sound? No, because you can't play sound when you when you have a microphone on. Oh, that's like so, 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 please tell Where's me. my phone? So, where are your words? Uh, no, I need, I need the phone. Oh, oh, my phone's over here. It, it will do. Okay, so I just need to type in, uh, oh I hate you, uh, what do you think of the whole new um, picture feature on Spotify? You do you have Spotify on your phone? I don't use Spotify on my phone. Oh, okay, you don't know then, so. So please tell me. Oh, hi dad. Hey, how are you? This podcast is now featuring Dad. <laughs> He's the new sponsor for this podcast. <laughs> Dad, happy Father's Day. Well, actually, no. It was the American Father's Day. American Father's Day or British Father's Day. Yeah. <laughs> so, Dad, what are you doing? He's moving a slow cooker onto the bench. That's our dinner. Dad's making dinner. Unlike other dads. Or maybe some like other dads. Yeah. <laughs> Should we talk about fathers while my dad's here? Because I'm not too sure if I want to subject him to this song. No, no, no d d don't subject him to any songs. <laughs> don't subject him to any songs, yeah. No. <laughs> so, what's your father's signature dish? <laughs> <laughs> um, roast and roast. Roasted what? Um, roasted anything. Roasted napkins, roasted... Oh, <laughs> roasted meat. Mm. Either lamb, chicken, pork, or a pot roast. Uh, turkey? Has, he, has no. he ever done the turkey? No. Yeah. Um, 
my, my my family's not really into turkey. Why not? Is, I don't know. <laughs> gobble, gobble, gobble. Yeah, they, they, they just don't want to deal with such big of a bird. <laughs> that may be a reason why. How about poutines? 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 They do not know what that is. <laughs> Dad, you've done poutines before, right? I think you did. Miniature chickens. I think Dad's done poutine before once. No, well, well you, you might have been confused with the um, cheese curd chips and gravy poutine. No, 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 no. Dad actually done miniature chickens before and he called them poutines. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that was really cool though. But it's one chicken per serving. Okay. Yeah, they're that small. Okay. Oh, yeah. So your father does roasts, roasts and more roasts. Yeah, and then the stereotypical bacon eggs and Mike, you can do the toast. <laughs> How was the tea? Yeah, it's good. It's, do you want to try some? No. Okay. I've got my tea here. It's ginger beer. Yeah. That's hardly a tea. No, that's okay. Oh, come on, you. You could say it's a tea ginger. I mean, ginger tea of sorts. Carbonized ginger tea. Carbonized iced ginger tea. <laughs> is, is this podcast now sponsored by carbonized iced ginger tea? I don't know. I thought it was sponsored by fathers for a moment. It, it, well, it's also sponsored by fathers. <laughs> So, shall we actually break the number of sponsors we have per podcast uh, today? Oh, we have so many. Oh, we have so many. <laughs> <laughs> so, just, um, hey, Dad, did we add too much liquid? Yeah, good. I added too much liquid. Don't want you don't want it overflowing onto the bench, yeah. according to him. <laughs> Especially since we just recently got a new slow cooker, so we don't want to ruin the exterior. When did you get the slow cooker? A few weeks ago, I think. Okay. Yeah. What's that? When did we get this new slow cooker? Ooh, a month ago. A month yeah. ago. <laughs> a few weeks ago, yeah. <laughs> so we can't get back to the podcast until Dad goes back into his office because I need to play a song and the song will be, here we go. There we go. And I, I, I assume that he put the um, slow cooker on. Just wait. Yeah, dinner's sorted. So, let's see. Uh, uh, where is it? Uh. Is it too late now to say sorry? Now, please. That's enough. That's enough. That's enough. That's enough. Okay. Okay. So, what Sophie just played was... The hit song, I'm Sorry by... No, it's just Sorry. Sorry by Justin Bieber. Yes. Now, why have you... Why did you play that song? Can we finally forgive Justin Bieber? Oh, wow. (laughs) Um, Now, what what did he do wrong? Baby. He insulted a few fans. He got marvellously drunk a few times. He was quite an embarrassment. Okay. Now, I I admit when you're when you're young, you are allowed to make mistakes. He wasn't exactly young. I mean, <laughs> he's around about my age when he made this stupid, stupid mistakes, and I'm, and I'm not that. So it's just surely when you're nineteen or eighteen, you should be mature enough not to be, you know, offensive or no, like hugely offensive or nasty or. Just downright annoying. I will never forgive him for baby, but maybe I can forgive him for the other things. <laughs> well, oh, okay. Firstly, baby wasn't that bad because of the ludicrous bit in the middle. <laughs> um, I, I will admit that peeing into the uh, janitor's mop bay was uh, largely inappropriate. <laughs> um... All the paparazzi photos, you can kind of get away with. Oh, the paparazzi designed to embarrass you. Yeah, you, you, you can kind of get away with that. Um, well, we just have to wait and see. 
That's all we have to do. How many more years before we can finally forgive Justin Bieber? <laughs> Why can't we forgive him now? I mean, it's been a few years since he's done anything really no, stupid. No, well, it's just like, can you forgive Chris Brown? For beating up Rihanna? Yeah. Oh my goodness, um, I, actually heard of, I actually heard this parody song uh, in which Chris Brown was in, and um, they said that Chris Brown only beat up women. <laughs> He doesn't fight. He only he only beats up women. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which I think is hilarious, but. But Chris Bell kind of atoned for his sins, right? I mean, he. I mean. You you we actually discussed this once, like um before Rihanna, um Chris Brown's song was your typical money money booty booty vodka vodka raps. Oh yes. When he when he was with Rihanna, he was basically saying how right he was all the time, and after Rihanna, he said how wrong he was. Mm. So, so from money, money, booty, booty to I am God to I am very sorry. <laughs> so okay, so by my by my count, yeah. If you can forgive Chris Brown, yeah, sure, you can forgive Give Justin. Justin Bieber. But Justin Bieber was just you know a dirt sort of idiot, but he wasn't really you know an abuser. He was he he wasn't that bad, but he was pretty bad. Yeah, it was just like. Disorderly conduct. Disorderly conduct as opposed to... Domestic violence. <laughs> yes! They are two very different levels, okay? Yeah, now Austria's on the happiness index, I believe. It's on what? All the countries are on the happiness index. Yeah, yeah, but one's in the top five. Oh, good good on them. And we're, we're down, right? Yeah. New Zealand's Seven, down. I think. Yeah, it's quite S- sad. Something like that. But mind you, once you're up in the top ten, all the places can change very quickly because there's such small differences between the first ten countries. That's right. Yeah. I mean, honestly, the the difference between us and the happiest country could just be, you know, a difference of 0.5. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's ridiculous. So if you're in the top 10, you're doing well. Yeah. So what's the unhappiest country in the world? Is it Syria? I'm pretty sure it's Syria. It's Syria. I can't be surprised. I mean, they're currently in the middle, middle of a civil war. Yeah, that's just a little civil war. Yeah. I mean, ugh, it's just... That kind of blown us. That got kind of blown out of proportion, didn't it? Syria. Yeah. I mean, all they wanted was you know less corruption, and it ended up with the civil war. Like, how did that happen? Yeah, it was, it's a little bit too boom, boom, boomy. Yeah. For, for my taste. I know. I mean, all the all the all the protesters wanted initially wasn't democracy. They just wanted a less corrupt government. Mm. Then. Um, Arab Spring happened. Arab Spring happened. Stuff happened. Yeah. And it's now they're currently in the middle of a destructive civil war and so I'm like, ugh. So when will it end, the Syrian civil war? What, what will it take? The downfall uh, of Assad or? It just seems that no matter what happens, there will always be conflict. Yeah. It doesn't matter if it's Syria, if Power, it's... Power, greed, money. Yeah. Booty. Booty. Yeah. Not so much booty, but more cash booty. No, 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 no. Honestly, I've heard that lots of things are done for the, in the name of love. It's lust. Uh, sh- Religion. Shakespeare. Shakespeare. <laughs> yeah. There's always going to be conflict here. Yeah. But yeah. we're just lucky in New Zealand to be living in such a peaceful country right at this moment. <laughs> uh, I, I, I wouldn't call it peaceful. Well, we're not in the middle of a civil war. Yeah, but it's like... Yeah. We're just blundering along. Yeah, complaining about every little minor little thing yeah. just to get ahead by that little micro. Well, we are actually we do have a luxury of complaining. Yeah, and I was actually um in saying that there was a Harvard and Yale study done. Hey, what's boiling? Um, you might want to turn it to a. Uh, it's low. Okay. Uh, okay. Um. No, no, nothing's boiling. It's just I thought I heard something sizzling. Hey, oh, have yeah, a Harvard yeah. and Yale study? Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, hey, um, Harvard and Yale study. Yeah. Um, was about um, gender talking styles mm-hmm. between men and women, and they they theorized that um, the Shh. G- what's that noise? It's called, it's heating up. Oh, thank goodness. I thought something was boiling. It's just, no. no. As you're saying about gender studies, sorry? 
Um, Sorry, I just have to make sure that nothing's on fire, that's all. No, it's all on the fire. Nothing on fire, good. Women talking are generally on a continuum. It's pretty much consistent throughout the lifespan. Oh, yeah? Um, so, young, so young women, how do they speak? Like, like, like. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm, I mean like, I mean like in a, in a complaining sense. Oh, they, yeah? they, they, they seem to complain on a steady level. Oh, really? On a males, it's vastly different. So females, we complain the same amounts our whole lives? Yeah. Males? How about you guys? Males, um, they talk less during young adulthood. Yeah? And the older they get, the more they talk. <laughs> so the women are, like, plateaued from a young age, and I mean, that like, eventually one day we're going to meet the yeah. women. Yeah, that's why, um... So that's, what's that? Point of connection or equilibrium? Yeah, the point Eventually of... Eventually one day you've got to reach equilibrium. Yeah, the point of equilibrium is around about mid-40s. Mid-40s. And then the men start complaining more than the women. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and here's another, here's another interesting thing. Um, s- some economists theorise that suicide is a luxury good. Some economists, I'm not saying all of them. Hmm. Should I link you to the Freakonomics radio podcast about that? About I'll look. I'll look that up. Um, I shall link you. I shall link you to that. I, I, yeah. I, I can understand how it could be a luxury, yeah. But so, just to give you a quick breakdown, um, suicide happens in areas where you're rich. It happens more in rich white areas, well, in America at least. In, the other, in all the other areas, you don't have a suicide. Um, the least, the person that's most likely to suicide is a young white male. The person least likely to suicide is a middle-aged um, black woman. Um, the, the reason why they theorise that suicide is a luxury item is because um, if you're, say, disadvantaged in any way, you can blame your problems on external sources, such as, oh, um, this mark is being sexist, this policeman is being racist. Blah, blah, blah. But if you're, say, a young white male and you're rich, you're supposed to have everything going for you. And yet some people, some of them are still, you know, miserable. So um, they basically have to look at look at the inside, I suppose, and they start hating themselves. Like, why am I not happy? Why am I miserable? Huh. And um, because of that, they suicide. Okay, I, I, I can understand that. Whereas with you, um, yeah, you, it's you, way different. You can you can blame on the fact that you're poor or that you're mouldy or that some um, pe- that people just don't understand you, just callous in general. Whereas if you're just um, you know, a, a white young white rich male, you are kind of expected to be you know happy, and when you're not happy, or you think your life is not going too well, you can't really blame anyone. Yeah, and you can well, only blame yourself. Yeah, that's, and that's how this. And that's how you start um, you know, getting the suicide. Same with me. Like I'm, I'm rich. Uh, I'm Asian, but that that means I'm that means that's my racism is a little bit less. I still might get some sexism, but if I'm not happy with my life, I can't really blame anyone. Yeah. Yeah, but before I'll be lucky, I'll be lucky to suicide. You know. Yeah, but uh, yeah. yeah, but it's, it, it, it's good on a stereotypical level. Yes. Um, and like, well, like everyone sees in social research, mm. correlation does not equal causation. Sure. Um, yeah, I, I, I can under, I, I can understand the assumptions. Yeah. From from what the article is bringing. Mm. Um, that may not be on on my personal level. Mm. Um. But yeah, I, I I can understand how you how they can be a luxury good. Sure. Yeah. So that's what some economists theorise. Other economists say that we don't have enough data on suicide to do anything about it just yet. Uh, yeah, and it's um, and that's generally due to um information gathering. Yeah. Um. Not no really... one likes to talk about suicide. <laughs> no, no, no one does. <laughs> no one does. So um. We're 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 being especially frank here. Yeah, 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 yeah. we are. Um, Frank Oz, perhaps. Um, yeah. 
famous cartoon artist, Frank Collins. Yeah. Um, I mean, Mike, are you comfortable talking about it? Yeah, of course I am. Yeah, well, but the two of us are unusually comfortable talking about suicide. Yeah, because, like, yeah, yeah that, that's probably one of the big things that we are as yet undecided on. Yeah, what um, causes suicide? Yeah, um, because I know that in New Zealand we have the highest teen suicide rates in the world. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, well, we're a little bit behind South Korea, right? I mean, South Korea is, I think, is the highest, and we're like second or third or something. Ridiculous. Oh, no, but yeah, I was meaning for teens that. No, no, for teens, because. Um, in South Korea, um, the pressures of being a teen is immense. Oh, yeah. So I think we're like second or third behind South Korea in um, terms of teen suicide. This, this has been... The As Yet Undecided... Podcast on location. Yes, it's a special. Thank, thank you for inviting me into your humble... Domain. Abode. Abode, yeah. <laughs> We've not, been here a few times, Mike. Not Adobe. <laughs> So you may contact us on as yet undecided podcast at gmail.com or you can follow us on Twitter, Tumblr and Facebook, AYU Podcast. Yes, and I do like your social media ideas coming into fruition now. Short videos on um, future ideas. Yes. Yeah. Um, and you can contact me on the Manus on all platforms. Yeah. And Sophie can be contacted on Sophie nine seven oh nine, except for uh, except for Instagram. Yeah. Oh my goodness! When will we ever get the Russian Sophie over? Ah, uh, we, we may have to do it through a um, Skype mail order. Mail order, mail order. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So who should get to marry then? I don't know. She can marry you. Oh, thanks. Get, get that citizenship down pat. Yeah. <laughs>